y'all. I'm Mary from Restless Chipotle and today we are going to talk about how to cook a round roast. So the round roast looks like this. It comes from the um, hip area, the back leg area of the cow and it's generally a not extremely tender cut of meat because of that because it gets a lot of exercise. You want to look for some good marbling in the meat um, and you want to go with a either slow dry roasting method or a pot roast kind of method. And the pot roast method is what we're going to use today. I'm going to use my slow cooker and um, this is going to cook for about eight hours on low with um, a little bit of liquid and so, uh, and we're gonna sear it first. We're gonna sear it first to caramelize the outside, keep the flavor in, and to add more flavor. So, I'm gonna take it, we're actually in my kitchen today. Um, some of y'all said that you just would rather I cooked in my kitchen than in the studio. And so, sometimes that doesn't work real well, but this morning it's actually possible. So, we're gonna do that. And um, this is my dining room, dining area, part of the kitchen. We've got an old house. And so I'm gonna take you over and show you how to caramelize your pot roast. And the caramelization method works with any kind of roast you do, whether it's a chuck roast or a round roast or whatever. If you wanna caramelize that meat, if your recipe calls for caramelizing that meat, this is what you're gonna do, all right? Okay, let's go over there and get started. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to season the meat on all sides. You can use a lot of different seasoning mixtures, um, salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, any of that, but I use a, um, a Creole seasoning and that's what I'm using for this one. It adds a little spice, adds a little flavor, adds salt. So I'm just using kind of an all-in-one thing. And you're gonna use about a teaspoon and a half per pound of meat of your mixture. Um, so I've got a couple of pounds of roast here and I'm just gonna spread this on all sides. I've got a tablespoon of the um, this mixture. You can also add flour to it. I don't normally do that just because I don't like the extra carbs, but um, <coughs> 
it's definitely something you can do. All right, so now as you can see, this is covered all over with the, with the mixture. And um, I'm going to set this aside while I get the rest of the, um, while I get the pan ready. So I'm using, So I'm using an all-in-one cooker because what it does is it allows me to brown the roast, caramelize the roast on all sides, and then I can turn it down, add the rest of the things, uh, turn it down to low and slow cook it, which is what I'm gonna do today. I'm using peanut oil, so I'm gonna use a little peanut oil in the bottom. I like peanut oil because you can use it on a very high heat and it doesn't get rancid or it doesn't get anything, it, you know, it, it just works really well. It's got a very high smoke point. So you want that to get really hot. And the what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add onions to it. There, it probably could have been a little bit hotter, but I'm just gonna add a few onions and I'm going to saute them just to add flavor to the pan. And again, this is all being done on a high heat because I want to do it fast for one. As those onions caramelize or you start to brown and start to caramelize a little bit, you can start smelling the onion smell coming out of it. That means that the onion is really actually releasing the flavor into that oil. And when we brown the meat, that's going to, um, it's gonna flavor the meat with the onion. Just give it a little extra juice of flavor there. Now, the onions are almost done, so I'm going to add some chopped, um, I'm going to add some chopped garlic. I add that kind of last because it scorches really easy and you don't want it to scorch. But that's gonna add flavor there too. All right, so the 
onions are kind of brown, they're kind of caramelized, and the uh, garlic is in there. It's smelling really good in the house. So I'm going to go ahead and put the meat in there. And I'm gonna start with the fat side. And just let that um, caramelize off, you know, burn off a little bit, not burn. Yeah, I'm just gonna let that brown and caramelize for just a minute. And I'm still kind of pushing all of the garlic and onions over so that they don't uh, get scorched. You can actually take them, in fact, I'm gonna do that and take them right out so that I don't have to worry about it. It really <clears throat> is easier than having to just continually watch it and I don't wanna to have to turn my meat down at the moment. All right, so I will put those back in in a few minutes. So when you've left that for a couple of minutes, you can check it and uh, make sure that it's started to caramelize. It doesn't usually take very long. Then we're gonna switch it over to its side and we're gonna caramelize that side for a few minutes. And this is still on high heat. So after that's been sitting there for a few minutes, we're gonna turn it over and we're gonna hold it up so that we can get every single side. You, if I turn it all the way over flat, the edges aren't gonna get done and I want the edges to get done too. So I'm just gonna hold it here. Um, you can do it with two, um, you know, two forks or however you wanna do it, but I don't mind getting my fingers in there. I think I'm burn proof at this point. And so we're just gonna let that side caramelize a little bit. Get nice golden brown. And then I'm gonna set it up on the end. And you have to hold it up. There's no way around it because if I let it go, it's going to fall over because it's not an even piece. Now we're going to hold it up on the other side so that has a chance to do it. It's kind of tedious. But you can see what a rich golden brown that is. Uh, pretty color, it's gonna have good flavor. The meat juices are, um, the meat is adding its flavor to the oil that, you know, from the onion and the garlic, and it smells amazing. And um, so you're just gonna do that and let it caramelize on all sides. It's gonna, it takes a few extra minutes than just plopping a raw piece of beef in the crock pot or slow cooker, but, this extra couple of minutes makes all the difference. It's so worth it. And I realize sometimes y'all don't have time. Sometimes I don't have time. So you're gonna miss it once in a while, but whenever you can do it, do it this way. It will make the meat have so much, so much better flavor and so much um, better texture, I think.
So it's brown all the way around on all sides. We're gonna put our onions back in and garlic. We're gonna add carrots. And I like the baby carrots because it takes a lot less time, you know, to do everything. You can use the big carrots, baby carrots, whatever you want to use. Now, if this was a chuck roast, I would probably put a half a cup or so of, um, of liquid in here, whether it was water, or tomato juice, or beef stock, or whatever. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna change this to slow cook on low for eight hours. And I'm going to add about a fourth of a cup of water or heat stock, whichever. You just don't need very much with this. You just don't need very much with this because the, this particular cut of meat uh, roasts beautifully. And so the less water, the better. We're gonna put the top on that and it is will be ready to go in eight hours.